Multiple sclerosis causes all kinds of pain, and to make matters worse, it's oftentimes confusing to the outside observer. In this video, I'm going to help you decode MS pain. Don't turn away, because that starts right now. Hey! Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I'm the founder of the Boster Center for Multiple Sclerosis, where we care for families impacted by MS from around the globe. Both in the office and on telemedicine, we accept all major insurance carriers and we're currently actively enrolling for clinical trials. In this video, I wanted to help you decode a very frustrating constellation of symptoms, symptoms of MS pain. The reality is that MS pain is not your average stub your toe or bump your elbow. It's confusing, and it's very, very confusing to the outside observer. I've actually heard doctors say, MS doesn't cause pain, which by the way is false. In this video, I wanna go through several different kinds of MS pain, help you understand why it confuses others, and help you sort out in your own head so that you can explain it to your friends and family. So let's jump in. The first kind of MS pain I like to discuss is spasticity. Now I have several different videos on this channel about spasticity. I'll make sure to throw a link up above so you can check those out later. But in a quick nutshell, when you want to bring your arm in, you have to flex this massive bicep. You have to make the muscle shorter so it pulls your arm in. But at the same time, you have to relax the tricep so that your arm can bend. Now you don't say tricep relax, you just bring your hand to your face. The spinal cord and brain relax the tricep for you. When there's been damage to the descending motor pathways in the brain and spinal cord from MS or something else, sometimes when you want to do this, you also want to do that. Your triceps not letting go. And what ends up happening is you have a tug of war with your own limb. That causes spasticity, which is extremely common in multiple sclerosis. In fact, 70% of people impacted by MS will suffer from spasticity. This manifests clinically in three ways. Limbs that are hard to bend, quite literally an arm or a leg that's stiff, or a spasm, like a bouncing of a limb, or a charley horse, like a cramp. The reason that spasticity can be particularly confusing is it's exacerbated or worsened under two weird conditions, conditions that you might not otherwise think about. Spasticity is always worse when you're still, when you're not moving. So when you're sleeping at night, you're still, or when you're driving in a car for three hours, you're still, or when you're sitting at the keyboard typing, your body's essentially still. And the more still you are, the stiffer and stiffer you're gonna get. And that's confusing. Someone could be walking into work having no problems, they sit at their desk for three hours and they get up and they're complaining of cramps and spasms and their legs are stiff like Tin Man. And it may be confusing to them and also to the outside observer, your other colleagues. A second condition that makes spasticity worse is when it's cold outside. And so if you live in sunny Columbus, Ohio, my hometown, where we have four very real seasons, it is a constant changing situation outside. It'll be warm and then it'll be cold and then it'll be really cold and then it'll warm up a little and then it'll get cold again. And each change in weather changes spasticity. As you can only imagine, it's very, very confusing to explain to someone else, my leg is cramping. You can't see it, but I can feel it. And it's even worse when you have to explain, but it's only bad if I've been still or when it's really cold out. Hopefully this helps you understand, A, a couple factors about spasticity and why it might get worse, and B, a language so you can explain it to your friends and loved ones. The second confusing pain syndrome is that of optic neuritis. So it's a very, very common MS attack where the immune system attacks the optic nerve, the nerve that runs your eye. And it causes swelling of the optic nerve, and so that makes it hard to see, but it does something else. That swollen nerve takes up space, and so when you move your eye in the socket, it tugs on that nerve, and it can cause very serious pain with eye movements. And so again, you have this weird pain syndrome where you're telling someone my eye hurts, but then you're also saying, and when I look left or right, it really hurts, and that's confusing. This is a classic feature of optic neuritis, and it actually helps us diagnose someone with optic neuritis. When we hear a story of my vision's going out, it hurts when I move it. Now, fortunately, when you give the human being steroids and it quells the inflammation, it also helps cool down the optic nerve, there's less pressure, and it hurts less when you move it. The next confusing pain syndrome is Lermite's phenomenon. Now, Lermite is a dead French guy that named something after himself 100 some years ago. 
Now in the modern era, we don't do that anymore, but back then it was like all the rage. So Lermite's phenomenon was an observation that when someone bends their neck down, they have electricity running down their back into their feet. They feel like they've been electrocuted or shocked. It's caused by a lesion of the spinal cord. And that lesion gets tugged on when you bend your neck. You're kind of stretching your neck. And so it tugs on that lesion and it causes it to fire, sending a message to your brain that you're being electrocuted. Now this is super annoying and frustrating and confusing because it only happens when you move your neck. So you'll have people, they're fine, except for when they look down or up. And that's weird to explain to someone else. Now, fortunately, there's treatment for Lurbeet's phenomenon. We can actually use medicines that quell seizures to treat this. But it's a frustrating and unusual neurological pain syndrome, which might, to the outside observer, not make a lot of sense at first blush. The next confusing pain syndrome also involves the spinal cord. When there is damage to the spinal cord, it can send false messages to the muscles in between the ribs and cause them to clamp down. And it's referred to as the MS hug. Now this is the only hug that you don't want. It oftentimes feels like you're being squeezed in a vice or that you have a tourniquet on your waist and it's being pulled super tight and it's very painful. It's literally the intercostal muscles, the muscles in between your ribs that are clamping down. And it's a common symptom, unfortunately, when there's been spinal cord damage. Sometimes it only shows up on one side, sometimes it shows up on both. And very often it's mistaken for cardiac chest pain or a pulmonary problem. People are going to the ER to be worked up for a heart attack only to find that everything's okay. MS hug, like Lermite's phenomenon, is one of those really confusing symptoms and not uncommon in the setting of MS. Neuropathic pain in general can be somewhat confusing. People can have a limb that feels like it's burning, like quite literally like it's in a fire, or it's freezing cold, or it can feel like it's being crushed, or it can feel like a million pins and needles, or it can feel like it's being electrocuted. All of these are forms of neuropathic pain, and they're all weird. It's not a normal kind of pain that people experience. These are all discussed under the umbrella of the term dysesthesia. Dysesthesia is a doctor word for a painful sensation. And maybe the most confusing, most annoying form of dysesthesia is pathologic itching. Pathologic itching is a form of neuropathic pain, except it doesn't hurt, it just itches. And people will scratch themselves to the point where they're bleeding and there's no rash and nobody can figure out what it is. Well, it's coming from spinal cord damage from MS. Very, very frustrating symptom. And many people with MS don't even realize that that's a neurological complaint. I have a video that I'll link up above where I dedicated an entire discussion just to pathologic itching. So you can learn more about it if you like. If you've been in my clinic or listened to any of my videos, it's no secret that I'm a big fan of meaningful sexual intercourse. And I view that as a major component of quality of life among adults. Unfortunately, MS can interfere. And one of the evil ways that MS interferes is by a symptom called dyspareunia. Dyspareunia is a doctor word for the down there's hurt. So sexual sensation actually hurts and it can be, it can be a no-go. It's unfortunately not all that uncommon in MS. And it's fortunately something that we can treat. I've got all kinds of lotions and potions to help with dyspareunia. Many people impacted by MS get super constipated. And constipation can be associated with massive pain. And so sometimes people will have belly pain or pelvic pain or radiating pain, and it's not causing by a new neurological problem. It's caused because they haven't moved their bowels in a week. Unfortunately, people with MS are at increased risk of developing migraine headaches. They're also at increased risk of developing trigeminal neuralgia. These are two types of excruciating neuropathic pain and people with MS are way more likely to experience these types of pain compared to the general population. Lastly, all these different forms of pain associated with MS can be amplified by other external factors. If you have an infection, like even an occult urinary tract infection you're not aware of, your baseline neurosymptoms can be amped up, including neuropathic pain, and I see this all the time. Psychosocial stressors can make MS symptoms worse, including baseline neuropathic pain. So during an upcoming exam or God forbid a divorce or a loss in the family, you can see neuropathic pain skyrocket. Depression is all too often in MS 
And if you show me a depressed patient, I'll show you someone that has an amplification of their baseline pain. Now, the good news is if you treat the depression, the pain gets better. Level of fitness plays a role in pain. And invariably, our patients that are deconditioned and out of shape are going to have way more aches and pains than those that don't. Nutrition status and hydration status play a major role in controlling pain. If you don't believe me, try eating clean and drinking plenty of water for a couple weeks. You might be shocked at what you find. Similarly, sleep is a major, major concern. And if you have poor sleep or inadequate sleep, particularly if this is chronic, your baseline pain skyrockets and chronic pain becomes much more intense. The bottom line is that MS causes pain, not just one or two types, but many different kinds of pain. And several types of MS pain are downright confusing to you and most certainly to the outside observer. I want you to feel confident and comfortable talking to your friends and family about this topic. And it's my hope that through education, they can become a bit more understanding of the complexities and the weirdness of MS neuropathic pain. If you'd like to learn more about this topic, Click the button that's on your screen right now for an entire playlist discussing various types of MS pain. And until my next video or my next live stream or the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.